Have you ever heard of steel mace flow? This week, I speak with flow artist Jared Thomas about the benefits of steel mace flow for our mobility, shoulder girdle, and core strength, and how we can get started with it and incorporate it into our fitness routine on this episode of Hunger Hunt Feast. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of Hunger Hunt Feast. With me is Jared Thomas. Uh, Jared is a flow artist in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome, Jared. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me, Zane. Appreciate it. And for people who don't know, aren't familiar with flow or what flow or what flow artist is, uh, can you give us just a little description? I mean, we'll get we'll get deep into it, but let's kind of give people like a, an overview of what that is. Sure, sure. So I use weighted implements anywhere from maces, as you can see behind me, to clubs, kettlebells very often, um, even things like barbells to utilize full range of motion movements to move these implements and to transition from movement to movement, uh, which does a whole, provides a whole bevy of benefits uh, to the practitioner, but uh, ultimately allows for, for fluid mobility, building range of motion. Um, and, uh, you know, it's oftentimes better described by showing it to folks than it is even describing it, but it, um, there's a specific type of fluidity that comes with it. And, um, and while you're building strength and your range of motion, a number of things that we'll get into. Right. No, I saw your Instagram and it's a great example. And I'll, I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes, but people need to check you out at, uh, uh it's at Jared Michael Thomas on Instagram. Yes. Right. Um, but it, it's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's just, it's very fluid, obviously, by the, the sound of flow. It's a very fluid movement. It looks a little bit like it's got a little bit of martial arts kind of um, influence in there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, yeah, you're moving a, essentially a weapon or a weight of some sort. So, um, and it's really, uh, I would say, challenges stability and, um, range like you said range of motion control you know of full body control uh but it's a little different than your typical what people think of as a workout as far as um how you approach it and the mindset around it when you say it's a little a little more less it's less uh bursts of energy and more like a, a steady as it says flow but steady movement constant movement constantly adjusting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, it's, um, it's, you know, you, you can be explosive with it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can, you know, I, I like to accelerate and decelerate as I'm moving through the motions. And that also shows stability and control uh, to the point that you were mentioning. Um, I think more than anything, what you find is when you see it, you, you, there's something about it you can tell with, with the, the, the pace and the range of motion um, that it has both a very structured uh, uh, foundation to it, but a lot of expressive elements that come out in it as well. And the idea here is, and to your point, Zane, as you mentioned with the martial art, is that as you build upon it, uh, you can expand your ability to utilize the functions of the movements uh, mm. as such that they can accomplish a whole range of things, not, not even just exclusive to fitness, but, but beyond. Hmm. Oh, sure. Mobility is um, so important. I've just noticed that as I, I've gotten older, I, I spend more time now working on mobility than I do actually on, on what would people consider strength, even though strength is required. But uh, mobility, I think, becomes more and more important over time uh, to focus on. You're starting very young, which is, which is great. I, I uh, wish I had. But it, um, you know, being able to move well being able to move in control, being connected to your whole body, you know, um, and moving and moving that you can't see, but it, I, it's very much, I want to say, I don't want to make it sound, it's creative. So it almost has like a, I want to say a dance element to it, but it's not uh, because of the fluidity, but certainly uh, I don't, I don't want to make that sound light. You know what I mean? I don't want to make that, make it sound light because it isn't, it's very, um, you can see how it'd be taxing and there'd be some, uh, some endurance involved 
in that as well. But it's not like doing a set of five or 10 with a heavy, you know, like squats or something like that. It's a very different, um, constantly moving, constantly changing. And there's not just one, you're not working in one plane like you are with many yes. strength training exercises. Right. You're moving on every plane. I mean, you're, you're, you're changing your stance and moving around in, in circles and side to side while moving a weighted implement over your head, around your body. Changing uh, levels. Yeah. Changing levels, changing hands, both hands, spinning it. So, uh, and how much, how much do those, uh, uh, give us a range of, of what those implements usually weigh. So you could buy a mace as small as five pounds, but for most people, 10 pounds is a really great way that helps you to, first of all, learn what it's like to hold it. So much of it is just about, you know, moving it through your hands, switching from side to side. A lot of that takes repetition and, and just working mm -hmm. through the motion, as well as the fact that it needs to be a certain way. So that way you can do that safely and effectively. Um, what often happens, as we find, is that folks in our community will, we, all, we often joke about it because we'll so often get as, as their first mace, a mace that's too heavy, that's 15 pounds or 20 pounds, and will oftentimes go down to a 10 once they realize they've humbled themselves a little bit because they have to learn these movements and ingrain them in. And then once our support structure is built in our body, because this is going to chain our, our, our posture, it's going to help give all of, our, uh, all of our ligaments and tendons work that it needs to have that flexibility so that when we do go up and weight to the 20 and the 25 pound 30 pound maces and so forth and as we as we go through these range of motions our body is ready to support those movements and and, and particularly in those kinds of ranges of mobility so right i would think you'd almost start with a baseball bat if you wanted to <laughs> yeah i mean the, the interesting thing about it when you're you know if you were to compare i mean yeah you could I do a baseball bat. I mean, it's, they're very light. Obviously, they're they're very very light. But theoretically, to get the movements down, if you're just trying to work on functionality, movement, moving something from hand to hand, and worried about hitting yourself in the knee or hitting yourself in the head mm -hmm. with something heavy, to get used to the the flow of it, so to speak. I mean, you you could use almost anything. I guess is what I'm saying. But you'd definitely want it to be light. Yes. Yeah. You can. And, and I would say this specifically, Zane, is that. You know, mace is a great example because all of the weight as one end is, is on one end. Sure. So, in fact, I can even just grab one of these guys right here. So, this is a standard 10 pound mace. My, okay. my very first 10 pound mace, actually. All of nearly all the weight, 90 plus percent, is right here. Okay. So, that means that when it's you're, you're doing these pulling motions, that when you're tall and it's coming behind your back, it's, it's creating a kind of inertia. Sure. That's giving a pull and that's telling your body, I have to stay upright while this is pulling against you, which is ex extending and lengthening um, your range of motion. And even okay. in some cases, your, your, your body, you know, your whole body as a whole, because I, I can actually say I've expanded my wingspan of about two inches in a, in a year and a half of doing this. And that was just a kind of a bonus side effect that I got from doing this for for two year, two plus years okay now. so so really you don't need something that's evenly distributed at all you want something where most of the weight is on one end that you're moving I, yes i would say i would say that's the case and and honestly you know there's there's a lot a lot of that that even transitions when you consider things like kettlebells and clubs uh you know so here's a five pound club they go up in weight as well so the, you know it'll eventually get bigger on this end it's usually though got even like a kettlebell having just a handle and the weight at the end, there's usually a weight that's on one distinct side, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is, is, is as a result of that, you can create a kind of pull and inertia, just like when you do a regular kettlebell swing, that's pulling against your body. But the idea here is, is to continue working these movements with weights that are light enough as such that we can explore things like lunges, um, doing mm. squats with them, and then transitioning from that position to another one, like you alluded to earlier. So, so there are a lot of folks that can sit there, that 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 will do the same movement over over, over again. And we definitely suggest doing that. I definitely suggest doing that um, to get down a movement, especially if it's just a lateral lunge or say an uppercut, um, as an example. And again, these are all things that folks will be able to see on on my page and so forth. Um, and but 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 over time you'll start to chain these together and do a flow another example would be 
maybe like wrestling, for instance. I was a high school wrestler, which is a lot of the influence uh, that I have in my martial arts background and so forth. And when you wrestle, you'll learn a move. You'll learn how to shoot, you know, go under someone's legs and so forth. And you'll repeat that over and over again. And there's absolutely tons of value in doing that. But the goal in doing that is so that way, as you advance and as you compete, at least in wrestling, and, in, and as you continue to flow with what we're doing here and what I'm talking about, you'll be able to chain these things together and pull things out of your back pocket that become more like utilizing it like a tool um, and to sure. perform a specific function. So the the added value kind of ends up being a flywheel as you ingrain these, these movements into your muscle memory. Right, because you're not stopping and starting to different movements. It's all, it's, as it says, flow. It all really, you move from one to the other. So you get creative and just start adding and changing order and, and move movements mm-hmm. through um, like a, in a creative, almost some of it looks almost Zen like when I see some of the videos you've done. I mean, very like, I think if you got into a true flow, like you think of, of a yoga flow, if you had that down where you were comfortable with the implement, comfortable with the step, you could, you could be in an almost meditative state or a state where your, your mind was just, wasn't focusing on what you're doing was much more relaxed. Maybe there was some free thought. I know when I'm just working out and I'm in a place where I'm kind of cruising through what I'm doing and I'm very familiar with it. I'm not having, and then thoughts will come. My creative thoughts are problems, you know, uh, problem solving happens or some little thing that I've been searching for thinking about will all of a sudden pop in my head. And it's just being and turning off enough external noise to be present. Right. And so I could see very much so with flow, much more so than with, a, with, a, with my, you know, a circuit workout that you would be in a state where you would be just present and turn off distractions and your frontal cortex isn't spinning through all the things that go through your head. But you just got to have this kind of calm that comes over you and, and probably allows some of that. If you want to call it meditative or just creative thinking or, or some of that, you know, the. Uh, just a just a state where you're not overstimulated, you know, with with external external stimulation. Yeah, yeah, I, I would. Yes, yeah, that's a that's a great way to put it. And, and in fact, right now it's a very hot topic when you hear people talk about flow states. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is exactly it. But but when people are talking about that, they're referencing. There's a lot of science behind it that talks about how when you're making decisions and when you're having to, you know, solve problems specifically and puzzles right. and things. There's a type of like an alpha, alpha brain waves that your mind's on where you're having to think a lot and, and it becomes harder to perform or you don't have as much energy and output. It's not, it's not necessarily as, uh, uh, as efficient. However, mm-hmm. when you're more relaxed, you'll actually enter into a state that gives you a little bit more, like to the point you made where you're relaxed there's a kind of a calming sense and you you're able to receive things and receive the movement and receive the information your brain is giving you to say the, you know, the object is swinging in this way and you've got to position your body in this way. And it kind of just tells you much more intuitively. So, you know, I saw something, uh, I think today on Instagram, uh, where they talked about Patrick Mahomes, you know, with, with the chiefs and they, they won this weekend and how uh, when he's on the sidelines watching the defense play, his heart rate's actually higher than when he's in the huddle and pre-snap. Oh, wow. So, so that would be an example of it because what it's saying is when he gets into, when it's, when it's his time, it's and the lights are on and go time, he's able to calm himself. Mm. I mean, that the data kind of shows that. I don't know if he's ever really spoken to it or not, but in that particular case, you know, they're, they're clearly showing that his heart rate's lower. Uh, he's able to calm himself a little bit. And, and as a result, it seems pretty clear that he was able to execute. So there's a lot of intuitiveness with those flow states that come from these movements. So that's a really cool part about it is because it helps you to, to really be alert of these flow triggers. And, and you, you'll, you'll be able to kind of feel that wash go from, from having a lot going on, a lot in your mind. There's so many times where I've picked the maze to start flowing and start moving it, you know, right when I start, I've got a lot of things on my mind or something else. And then just a few movements into it, uh, I start relaxing. I start feeling the, the suspension of the object as it's swinging through its trajectory and its path. And then before you know it, you, you do have that sort of presence and breath. And um, 
and connection that is quite meditative. So there's a lot of that. And you can see it usually when, when somebody's in the middle yeah, of it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely see it. Um, so how, what got you started in flow? I mean, and, and maybe maybe we need to, uh, there is a, if people start searching around, they're going to find like Mace Flow um, is the thing that pops up most. It's just yes. the, the best, yes. best marketed, if you yes. want to call it. Um, uh, yeah, I would agree. And, and very popular right now. Um, but it's, um, it's, there's more to it than just mace flow. There's, there, I mean, you said flow, as you described yourself, a flow artist. So tell us a little about how you got into it and how that started. I mean, and there is a distinction between, or maybe a flow artist is just a greater umbrella and, and mace flow is what is one implement that falls under that. So give us a little bit of like your background with it and, and uh, and what that looks like sure and that's and that's a really you know that's an interesting point as you as you're kind of you know pulling the umbrella and, and trying to connect it all together um yeah so so to give some context on that uh entering into the pandemic i guess march of 2020 now it's crazy it's almost been two years but um when that first started i was teaching a kickboxing class and okay. i had already made a lot of utilization of kettlebells however i wasn't really flowing with them i was mostly just doing traditional uh conventional movements and and working through reps and time and things like that with them um but i, enjoy, I enjoyed it but um hadn't done a, a whole lot with kettlebells at that point but had some experience with some with some unconventional tools right so pandemic comes it wipes out my kickboxing class and somewhere prior to that point, I had seen a mace, like advertised somewhere or something. I, I really honestly to say can't remember, but I just decided to go buy a mace. So I went to Amazon. I bought a 15 pound steel mace. <laughs> it's actually behind me. Um, and and I got home. And when I finally received it, I was like, OK, I've got, you know, I, I, I've got this and I need to figure out how to use it. So I went to YouTube and I saw I saw some good content. I saw people that were doing a lot of movements that were that were similar to what I was already doing with kettlebells where I was doing the reps and the time and you know very specific motions and then I came across a, 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 a who is now a good friend of mine and, and, a, and a guy named Leo Yurkitas otherwise known as Leo Savage uh, and he was one of the principal originators uh, of the flow movements as it pertains to the mace and so um, much of what has sprouted from this starts with the mace, uh, the way that the mace swings uh, behind you and how much longer it is, the kind of lever, really when we're talking about it, it's a, it's a lever uh, with a weight at the end, um, has fostered this idea of, of flow movement and transitions from position to position. And after getting proficient with the steel mace and steel mace flow, I largely began expanding that by going back to kettlebells and, and also implementing things like clubs and ropes and uh, I was going to ask you about dollars. ropes. It seemed like you could do a rope thing with it, or even something like I thought of the Hawaiian uh, dance where they, they have the, the poi balls on the end of a rope. They're yeah. swinging around fire, but mm -hmm. not not that that's what you're doing because that's a dance. But I mean, just that kind of concept where they are moving and moving these you know weighted objects at the end of a rope much more complexity much more complexity involved there with a rope i would think than than with a a mace where you can control the connection much more so yeah that that's that's interesting and that was something that i would say you know it didn't take me a, a super long time to learn the ro uh, learn the ropes but i i could tell right away that was my challenge is you know steel mace is rigid it's hard right you know you, it's it's not going to bend around you right but a rope does um but there, there's a lot of odd similarities in the fluidity of movement that that can cross over between the two. So um, there's a ton of great aspects to the way that the two can intertwine with one another. But um, ropes are interesting because so many of the folks that do rope flow and, and the way that this that the ropes have evolved um, it has nothing to do with jump rope. Uh, it actually has to do with moving the ropes around your body. Um, in most cases, without you ever without your feet ever leaving the ground. Um, right. And so, you know, a lot of folks haven't even seen this either. Um, this actually originates with David Weck. So I don't know if you know Weck Method or 
Uh, Dave oh. Weck, if you've seen a poster ball, you, you actually have seen okay. his, like, his big grand product that, that uh, he unveiled years and years ago. Gotcha. Um, yeah, he's the inventor of the poster ball. But, he, but he's, he's got a lot of diff- different concepts that he's worked on over the years, and he really uh, originated a lot of the original flow rope rope flow movements um but at, th- at this point in these days there's so much that begins to cross over i can take a steel mace and do a set of sword swings that looks exactly the same with a set of ropes in my hand and it's kind of wild to think about it because the objects are so different um but but that's because the reason why they can look so similar is because over time you work these movements and your body is positioned well to be able to work with the footwork and the steps, um, which is probably the, the last part and the most advanced part to what we do is the footwork because okay. um, well, you, you'll learn a movement in a static position, but then as you figure out transitions, you'll figure out how to move your feet along with it. Gotcha. So you've just been doing this maybe, we're coming up on two years then really. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cause that's, I mean, you, I, we, if you look at, your videos that you're solid you know what i mean it's like okay it's very very fluid your feet are moving your body's moving and it's very uh, they're doing different things but it all works together i mean it's very very much in a flow and so prior to that i mean your experience was wrestling martial arts and teaching uh kickboxing so i mean yeah you were moving already but it's, but you you weren't like uh um you didn't really have anything specific to flow that that preempted your 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 entrance in this you would do you didn't have to ask i mean martial arts to some degree but like <clears throat> it's, it's it's it just seems such a like a unique um set of movements in and of itself you know it, under its well while you do have a variety of implements it is so unique from your typical fitness class even like you're taking a kickboxing class or a boxing class or something like that where you know or yoga uh, it's really got its own place in, and, and there's, I just, it kind of, it really stood out to me. And um, I, are you, you've got, I hope, I hope you're, you begin to teach more of this, one of these classes around Nashville, because I want to go. Uh, just to, yes. because I know, I know me. It works. Here, like, yeah, I, I got to get in there, but I'm just really surprised there aren't more of them here. Uh, the growth that we've had here and just the amount of people coming in from other cities, there isn't more of a, a a demand there but i you're one of the first i've seen i'm fairly plugged into the fitness world here in nashville been here a while um and i haven't i haven't seen or heard of much of it so is there much going on in nashville as far as classes regularly somewhere or have you seen that no there's not i mean it's most it's it's i i've taught classes at various gyms for for different periods of time and, I, and i'm currently working with a number of with a couple of them to get some new ones new classes set up so definitely stay tuned for that i'll, I'll make sure to uh update my instagram and, and other okay. sources there so so people can stay plugged in but it, it's funny saying that you mentioned you know it's like so i'll tell you my experience i i at the same time uh, that I got into mace flow and mace work was also really when I started to learn about the companies and the vet and and the and the the folks that are helping to support it and in the community behind it and so on it out of Austin Texas is really they're probably the uh, the biggest proponent they sell yeah. the steel maces but also support the flow practice and when I came across this just looking for videos to how to use a steel mace. And I found my friend, Leo, I, I thought, oh my gosh, this has been a big thing. I'm like way behind. Like I, I thought like, kind of like you, I was like, I was like, you know, I never heard of this. And, and when you, you know, when you see it for some folks, they'll see it. And, you know, it, they may, may think ho-hum about it, but there will some, there'll be some folks that'll see it and it'll just grab them. You'll, you'll see, wow. Like it, you can tell the structure and the yeah. strength, but it's also, just really pretty um and it is and it, and it and it has and that's where the the fluidity and the flow and how mm-hmm. it kind of looks like you know, it's like i have a hard time describing is it dance is it not you know so yeah it's a little bit of tai I chi thought, and it's like tai chi with implements and a little bit like i said a little bit of dance but it's very because you're you're in control but it's much quicker it's it really is hard to describe i hope people go to your your instagram to, to watch i don't mean to interrupt you but it's, a, I mean, words can't do it justice, I guess is what it is. The shortest way to say what I just tried to blabber out is words can't do it justice. You have to see this 
and and and, and it's either going to grab you or it isn't. But it stood out to me as movement. I mean, most of us now are stuck in a chair for work. You know, we're stuck in a chair, either in a car or in a, behind a desk at home or work. We're stuck in a chair. We need to move. And it's not always in a single plane. It's not like moving in, a, in one plane isn't helping. If you see older guys, my age, or older moving who've been lifting weights for 20 plus years, we don't move so well. We typically, our hips are tight. We got shorter strides. Our shoulders are ridiculously tight. We can't reach back behind, you know, it, it's, we don't move like we should because between the weightlifting, the lack of mobility, age, just tightening up. And I, I saw it personally and thought, oh my gosh, I could so benefit in just feeling better, feeling more fluid, more mobile and be able to move better as I age. This is something you can do as you age, it's not going to damage joints. It's not going to make you strain anything. Once you get once you get it down, you, I could see it being something that is very sustainable into yes. your 60s and even 70s that would allow you to move better, be able to, you know, if you see people struggling to get out of a chair or off of a couch or bend down to tie their shoes or pick a child up off the floor. And that's... That's a lot. That's mobility. It's not always strength. It's mobility. Yes. And so I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's like that when you say some people get it, some people, when they see it, they go, I mean, I just thought of the, all of the implications, all the benefits to this kind of movement are what, um, it, what have been missing from fitness, what we consider fitness, the fitness world for so long, it was either weights or yoga, which is each have their huge benefit but this is a blending of mobility and strength and endurance and you know um it, it's just such a it's it's its own thing but it's a real blend of of if you want to maintain like a um a powerful strong you know core mobility it's it's very functional in my in my regard even though it looks artistic and dance like it's very functional and so, I, I mean, I didn't go on. On it's the one that's been, we, we left it on I, before I interrupted you. How on it has taken on and, and been promoting it and promoting the base flow and the certification and all that kind of stuff. But um, no, it just kind of, it stood out to me as something that's missing. And I can't believe it's not more prevalent in, 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 in fitness studios. I mean, you know, it, I think a lot about that and I think a lot about my own history um, with movement and, you know, going back to wrestling and martial arts oh. from a young age, I guess I, I, I would say that, you know, I, I've, I've done conventional weightlifting. I've, I've gone through football and off season strength and conditioning programs. Um, and I think the thing that's always stuck out to me for one reason or another is that I always wanted to be, you know, for lack of a better term, a superhero or mm, sure. or or even more specifically in real life if you're in the martial arts world the to have the ability to defend oneself and one's loved ones if if the need yeah. rise so so that was a lot of early motivation and and as a result a lot of uh the folks that i looked up to in that regard ha always had a lot of mobility and they were, whether they were fighters or mm -hmm. just well-known martial artists overall and so one thing I've always paid attention to is that <clears throat> while while there's there's so many ways to move and 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 consider fitness and so forth, the point that you made is that you know this allows me to be able to continue building functional range of motion, to continue working on strength, um, and being able to do a lot of things that life throws at you. So, mm. you know, I I could as an example, I could work really hard to have a 300 plus pound bench press, but, and you know, which obviously has cosmetic benefits and, and I can, I can do a higher bench press. Um, but I think where a lot of that, you know, kind of comes in, comes into life is, is, you know, what I think of is how does that, well, where, where is the actual application in life? And you'll see right. it in some ways, but it's still a very specific range of motion. And you said it earlier best when you said, you know, you have to pick up a kid off the ground. One of the one of the biggest things that, that, the, that the trainers in our community are promoting right now is programs for dads. And the reason yeah. why is because there's a lot of folks out there, 
dads that have done CrossFit for years or conventional lifting or what have you, but it like as much as they can lift weights, they struggle to get out of bed or to be able to, you know, go on a hike or to, to duck under something or reach down to pick up a child. And so, right. so much of this movement is going to ingrain a framework and an instruction and a structure to your body that can support all these variations of movement. Um, and, and, and so much so to the degree that, again, as we talked about, you can continue doing this to the, you know, over and over again for years and years um, with the, with the lower or let, I should say the more gauged version of, 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 of stress. So it doesn't stress your body so much that it wears you down. We want to hit an optimal growth phase to where we're building with it. Right. Um, and, and there's two other things that I would say, I think about a lot too, as well, which is when you think about mortality, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about morbidities here lately as a result of the virus and all that. But when you think about just, uh, 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 as, as, as aspects of mortality and indicators of mortality, um, there's two that stand up that come to mind, which is your grip strength is a very key indicator of mortality, yes. as well as your ability to get off the ground. So from a seated position, how easy is it for you to stand up off the ground? The easier it is, you know, in terms of your longevity and your overall health, the, the, the better it is. And the, the and stats, the stats, yeah and say people who have strong grip strength to get off the ground have have less mortality or have you know than people who can't and that's as an indication whether there's a direct linear thing there or just a a correlation between lifestyle and people who have that kind of ability but if you think about what tends to put most older people uh, what tends to incapacitate them it's when they fall it's if they fall and it's not always the impact but the fact that they're stuck and they're mm-hmm. stuck on the ground. And I've heard of this even with you know parents and in-laws. Uh, they get stuck on the ground, and then maybe the other uh, spouse, if there's if there's someone there, isn't strong enough to help them up. They get stuck on the ground, no food, no water, or limited, you know, yeah. access. And, and, and so those are things that even if their their health could last them, those things can put them in the hospital. Those things can make can, can put them out or put set them back a while. Just like you said, they can't get off the ground. They don't have the strength to pull themselves up or to skip themselves up. And that's not something that just happened overnight or with a single birthday. That came from a lifestyle that just eventually did not facilitate that type of movement. And so this is, like I said, something that you can sustain over decades that that helps helps you with that mobility is something you want to, a regular part of your life, you know, just to be able to, to do those things so you age what you have a longer not just lifespan you're not just living longer you have a longer health span and that is very much a part muscle mass grip strength getting be able to get off the ground uh you you can prevent a fall and you can and if you do fall you can get back up yes. uh, i mean huge huge and not and not that that is the only benefit but if we, we need to think about we have such a huge aging population this is something that someone who maybe like they had injuries they have previous injuries, they have knee problems, they have back problems, they, they can't lift heavy, but they could get in and start moving something very light that could strengthen their core, they could move their feet, and it reconnects them with their body, reconnects that nervous system and their spatial awareness or, you know, the proprioception to the rest of their body as they move in space, huge benefit that we, we, yes. that is often lost in traditional fitness, you know, yes. um, huge i mean it so i am again i'm surprised i can see there's going to be some growth so on it is promoting this or they they're probably so they're out of texas right on it yeah austin Mm -hmm. yeah they're austin so the big boom we tend to follow austin here in nashville uh culturally and and now with the boom of people coming in um do they have classes probably is a lot more of that kind of like a bigger community and classes and stuff going on there in, in austin i'm guessing Yes, I would say so. Honestly, probably the two places, geographically speaking, where you mm-hmm. could, if one, if somebody, you know, was looking to be around a, a, a really strong community that's already been established, Austin mm-hmm. would be one, and and I would say San Diego also. That makes um, sense. Has a strong movement, movement culture there as well. That, yeah, that's fitness, the fitness capital. Yeah, basically San Diego, and you can do this in your backyard. That's what's cool about yes. it. You know, so gyms close the side. You can't get your equipment. This is like. 
you've got one, you've got two or three pieces of variety of equipment and you that are sitting at leaning against your wall, taking up no space. And you could literally go in your a space in your garage, a big room in your house, or go out in the backyard and do it and and have a workout. I mean, I literally got my first mace as a result of the pandemic. Sure. And, yeah. And, and and the way that I was able to dive into the practice was because I as a result of gyms being closed and you know, at the time I was a single guy and stuck in my house thinking, you know, I don't want to just waste my days away here looking at the sun. So I said, I decided to go ahead and take my mace. And as I was practicing the movements, I would go to the park and I would get out in front of the sun and put my bare feet in the ground. Mm. You know, I may or may not put some music on. Um, and I would just work through these movements. And it was, it was a, a transformative experience to say the least in a moment when I think many of us were maybe reaching for one, but, but, uh, but nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can literally be absolutely in the middle of nowhere, you know, and, and, and have that, have what you need. I, my car's always got a mace or two. So hopefully I can, I can keep that going without scaring the population of folks. Are right. Well, Hey, you know, we could use a little scare now and then I've seen, I've seen now I've seen hammers that people use. I've seen there's a hammer out there. Is that something that some people use for this or is that a little too heady? Yeah, when you say, yeah, so did you see one? Like it's a big, it's a big hammer with a short hand. It looks like a Thor hammer, a Thor. A Thor, a Thor yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like yes, I have seen these. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend uh, in Georgia who actually invented one that's rubber. It's called the Banff hammer, B-A-M-F. Really? Uh, and uh, yeah. He's, he's got a cute acronym for it. I, I wouldn't do it justice now to try, but um, I met him in Maui and and uh, uh, there's a number of these kind of implements that are also starting to sprout up. Um, with that one in particular though, it's it's really seemingly a basic concept. It's a big block of square rubber at the end of a handle and you can actually slap it on the ground and, and get this kind of satisfying like slap noise when you <laughs> It's kind of like an audible, like, okay, I got the, I got the rep in, but yes, I, I, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you're playing whack-a-mole, I guess, but um, uh, no, I, I've seen, I've seen a lot of those, the, the steel hammers, like you're talking about, I, yeah. you know, I'm always trying to grow my collections. So hopefully uh, I, I actually know some folks that, that make some really, really beautiful pieces. And um, I intend to get one at some point, but, but, you know, that's where, that's also where you can, Get a, I mean, a little theatrical or, or fun with it. If Creative. You something that looks yeah. like a, like you're in a cartoon movie or something. Right. That, that club is interesting. It's short. How much do those clubs weigh? So you can go, so there's a whole clubs specifically. They okay. have a whole world to them that, that predates now. I mean, Mesa's go back thousands of years as well, but even in North America, even in the U S there was a Indian club culture over, you know, even a hundred plus years ago that was actually very strong at one point. So there's a lot of sides to this. Clubs though are generally used in lighter weights, like, you know, even as far as a pound and a half. Mm. And a lot of times they could even be wooden. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you'll see people that will, they'll stick their arms straight out and their feet will be right next to each other. Feet will be, be square. And they're working through range of motion with their arms, with their, mm. with their elbows, um, at the tips and at the end ranges. So there's a whole formula for, for a lot of the training that goes into that. But to your point, now you also can bring in the, the creation of steel clubs, just like the steel maces. And those generally go up quite a bit in weight. I mean, they can go, you know, you can get as one as light as, like I said, this one's five pounds, right? Okay. You can go up to, I mean, they have them now in excess of like 70 and 80 and i'm sure there's 100 pound clubs out there really so they get much yes. larger they get like baseballs that size then yes they can and there's and so much of this of that particular of of the use of the clubs can can be originated back to india so that's the whole thing again this is all it was just something that as i got into the mace as i got into flow my world just expanded here so Hmm. India has had variations of, of, of these tools of their own variety that they've used in traditional ways for years. These things called jewelry and meals, which are, you know, giant, big circular pieces of wood with a handle at the end. 
you know, and, hmm. and they'll weigh, those will weigh, you know, a lot of things come in kgs these days. They'll be, you know, 20 plus kilograms, 30 wow. kilograms. It's over 60 pounds, you know. And, and those were um, weapons or those were used for like dance and, and, and sort of cultural events? So mostly, mostly used for training. Um, okay. And for, I mean, yeah, culturally. Yeah, for sure. They'll do, they would have events where basically kind of like a modern strongman that, you know, the village mm -hmm. will come around and we'll see him. We're going to watch this guy swing this really heavy gata which got us just a giant mace basically um but it was but it originated from the Pelawani wrestling community which is also in, in in india so they would use maces clubs jewelry meals sumtola all these cool little inventions that they came up with to train with so these would be like instead of doing more conventional you know bench press and squat they would use a lot of sumtola jewelry meal and gata to prepare their body for Pelawani wrestling competition uh, and so so much of of the use of it over there has been for training for years wow um, it's just only now making its way across the pond oddly enough to the to uh the u.s and europe and beyond wow interesting so yeah because it, i mean that makes sense but it, like all the reasons we've talked about range of motion um stability core strength and be able to stabilize yourself while moving in space you know stabilizing your lower body while moving mm -hmm. your upper body i mean and, and you came from wrestling so it's just that, that's that's seems to make sense but how funny that it's taken this long to yeah. come over here with it with yoga being such a big popular you think we'd be looking a little closer like what else does india have to offer right uh <laughs> but this is I, I'm again. I'm I'm shocked. There more. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more of this. So, how would someone who's interested? How would they get started with flow? Let's just say flow, like whatever whatever iteration they they find themselves going to. Where would they start? Like, would they? Is it is it a you know? Is, obviously, running out and buying a mace is kind of cool. It might sound cool, but you've got to start. Move, the movement is really the uh, <laughs> yeah the, the key there. So, how do people get started with flow? I mean, how would, how would you, st you started looking on YouTube and then found more other, you know, yes, other, right. other resources? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I started, I started on YouTube, uh, but I, but I had an Instagram and of course now I've, I've grown mine quite a bit since then, but I, yeah. I would say, you know, you, YouTube and Instagram are great sources. You can, especially Instagram, there's the flow community is very strong there. So, you know, if, if it's specific to a mace, you know, if you find that mace is, is, is what you think is sticking out to you and most interesting to you. A 10 pound mace is a standard weight that I use literally every day or just about every day. It's what I would say is like the, is the benchmark for a, an individual to be able to represent, to, to show that they can work through the variation in, in the movements. Gotcha. And so once you've built that, you can much more easily add weight. Um, and, and the challenge becomes being able to continue to keep the mobility as the weight grows, but you have to sure. know how to do the movements and you have to have the ingrained structure in your body and all the, all the fine motor points, everything, all the joints, all this stabilizing it's gonna do. I, I call it a fine tuner for your body. Mm. To me, a 10 pound steel mace is like a, is like, you know, if you were to tune a guitar, you're gonna tune your body with this. And then, so like I said, as you go up in weight, um, it's perfect, you're ready to, to, uh, to continue doing those, those high level ranges of motion. Um, other people may find though that they may connect to ropes better as a as a first thing or even clubs so you, you could you can get a, a long way by searching for that on like I said on YouTube um, but Instagram has so much of that content so I, I would recommend first for people to go search for it go search for steel mace flow go search for rope flow flow in general especially like on Instagram or YouTube find what sticks out to you. Um, you know, a lot of people start with ropes and then they'll come over mm. to, to weighted implements. A lot of people start with mace. Um, and so it, it really just matters where they go. And, 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 and one other thing I would, I would also say that really separates all this is um, the, the range of motion that's going to build in your shoulder socket. So one thing I thought about this saying is, is even with a 10 pound weight, like a mace, you're, you will be able to use that weight to pull your arm down because mm. the weight will, weight will pull it, pull your, it's going to be down here. So the weight's going to pull 
your wrist down, which means your elbow goes straight up and then it's going to pull to bring the weight back to where it begins. And as far as I'm, as far as I can tell, and I grew up playing all the traditional sports, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, you know, you play golf, tennis, whatever have you, there's really no other sport that I see that as a part of its competition or even in, or even its training really, that gets that arm to have a weight that pulls it down. And what that's, that, this is super critical because this opens up so much of what of the benefits that you're going to receive, not only just because of what it's going to build in your arm and all in, in all your lats, I mean, your whole entire shoulder structure is going to, like I, I've always had really loose joints and they're very mobile, but I actually, for the first time ever really have some, some, some muscle mass in my, uh, in my shoulder socket because of it. Mm. Um, but it's going to add and build all that, especially at the very beginning, because the, the primary move to a mace is a 360. So if you've ever done a, just a re regular Russian kettlebell swing where it goes in front of you, mm -hmm. um, a 360 is going to be the key motion for a mace. And you're going, oh, to, gotcha. and it's going to pull your, your wrist down as your elbows go up and build that. But here's another thing it's going to do. It's going to extend your spine. So Ooh. when the weight, when your elbows are up yeah. and the weight is down below me, my spine gets extended and all my internal organs will get extended. So if you've ever been on one of those um, back extenders that you, you get on and you can basically go upside down, your feet are strapped in. Version uh, table. Can, yeah. The or, yeah, that's table. it. Version table. Yeah. I, I would one. say this, this is like an inversion table, but you're standing tall. You're, gotcha. you're, you're supposed to be standing really tall and it's going to extend all that. So there's so much of that that's going to open up your body to receive the rest of this movement. So Great. I mean, everything for everything about it is excellent. Whether you're a longtime fitness person, I mean, uh, and you've been doing all, you've done every variation of fitness and traditional weightlifting and CrossFit and anything else, all the way to somebody who's just now looking to start somewhere, um, it's a it's an excellent tool for that. Gotcha. That's interesting. Yeah. So you could do that with, like you said, with the kettlebell, that circle around your head if you just want to get used to. If that's what you have right now, but you could you could do that circle. I mean, that's a typical um, kettlebell movement, right? Halo, right? Halo. The halo. Yeah. You can it. Um, the, Not the, the same, the, but, it, but. It'll, it'll be better if you can get. Yes, it, it's it's a similar motion, but the key thing is it uh, is that uh, having a little bit having weight further away is going to yeah. really engage that pull structure to where that elbow is going to start being able to pull up and back. Oh yeah, opening up the lats there like that. I mean, most people's lats are pulling their shoulders in tight. It's really what pulls us forward yes. and the traps up and anything that can bring the shoulders back and down. And then and at the same time, pack the shoulder joint like that. Yes. The weight yes. coming down in there and you're packing that shoulder, it makes it stronger. Uh, no, that's brilliant. That's that's really so that's that's it, and that's a basic kind of you said a, a kind of a fundamental movement. The 360, the 360, so again, going back to even the traditional stuff in India, the 360 is what we call it because it does a circle. The 360 is the primary bread and butter movement. And, and so many aspects of what we do in flow flow from the 360. So the 360 gotcha. is one primary movement and what we call 10 and two is the other. They say 10 and two, 10 o'clock, two o'clock, you know. Right, um, like driving. Like driving. Yeah, uh -huh. you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll swing down and then you'll stop at two o'clock, let the weight go back and you'll come back around and then it stops at 10 o'clock. So, so it never crosses your center line, but it'll go from side to side. Ah, so, so control another, there. Yeah, it gives you yes. some control. You've got to change directions and yeah. Wow, cool. And a, another key distinction about that as well, just one more thing. I mean, I could wax poetic for a oh, while. Oh yeah, no, but, go, but, yeah. But the, but the 360 specifically and this is is a great way to help train and engage your brain to prepare for a speedy or accelerated motion of movement between hemispheres because you're going to move something from one side and use rotation to move to another so if it's a 360 it's going to go from being over here being behind your back to now being up here and you're just going to be standing here you'll be square you'll be tall and it's going to pass over 
your, your hemispheres of your brain from one side to the other. And so as you do more of these movements, like say uppercuts, you go from say your right side of your body and the movement will end on the left. And then you can start to do a movement from that side. And this gets, this gets this idea of getting used to weight passing the midsection of your body, whether it's perpendicular or parallel to you, it's going to pass on a path of, of trajectory that's going to train your brain to, to reorient its spatial awareness. You mentioned this a little bit earlier. And, and that's the distinction. Yeah. That way yeah. you can, because even though I can't see it, it's behind me. I know where it is and it's moving on this yeah. linear path through space. So that really helps to explore the possibilities of what you can do as well as keep you safe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the nervous system, I mean, brain, nervous system, muscles, movement. I mean, you have to, and as we, as again, aging, but as we age, that connection starts to lose. It's, it's like an old circuit or an old wire. Yes. It starts to lose its ability to fire and we have to train it. When you're a kid, you're doing all sorts of stuff and you move in every direction. Yeah. You're so inefficient. You're constantly moving more than you need to. And as, as we get older, we, we get very efficient with our movements to the point that it restricts or limits what we do anymore because we're not just flailing around and tumbling and jumping off and twisting and we, we're yeah. very efficient and safe. And so to, yeah, to get the body to move in ways that it can't see through the whole movement, just changes size. You said changes hemispheres of your brain as you're connecting from one side to the other. I mean, yeah, the benefits are there. It's such an ancient um, truth. Yes. That they may not have realized the, 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 the real biology of it at the time. They knew the result when they did this, when they started moving this way, that this is going to help with this wrestling or it's going to help with mm -hmm. because, because of the benefit. It's like you're emulating movement that is required in martial arts or in uh, a, maybe even a work environment, depending what, you know, how you, if you're physically laborious, but in a, in a self-defense or um, the, like the wrestling, you've got to move in every direction. You've got to be very aware, spatially aware. You've got someone on top of you, someone on, or someone underneath you, someone who's trying to move, flip you, move you over, and you've got to try to adjust in the moment. And yeah. so all of that spatial awareness uh, and be able to move in ways when you when you might have your face planted in the mat, <laughs> you know. Yes. So I mean, yes. it's it's very functional in that in the self defense sense. But it, and in life, it's it's just like you don't. It, it makes it makes all of those nerves fire and wakes up parts of our brain that through efficiency and and age, we lose. We just yes. lose it because we don't because we don't use it. And then, again, like you said, it's a safe way. Um, it's a it's a great way to, to to incorporate into fitness routine that isn't that's different from strength training because how many people do you know they do I mean they do way too much of one thing they either do way too much time on the treadmill way too much time in the weight room they they overuse overtrain right something that is wearing down or you get overuse injuries right from from not enough variety and so I would guessing this this is like a it could be a, a, a serious component that could offset, create um, a level of an adaptation without yes. without overtraining. Yes. I, mean, I mean, I think it'd be very difficult to overtrain your body doing these kind of movements, and yet the nervous system's getting, you know, stimulation through, throughout the, yes. the, the whole the whole time. Yeah, I would say there's two things there. So it it's it should everything about this. So one key distinction as well that I always make is that. It should feel good. You're, you yeah. should, you know, it's kind of like you hear somebody telling you like when you're stretching, like it should, it should feel uncomfortable, but it shouldn't hurt. It's going to feel like that, but it's going to feel like really good more than it's going to even feel uncomfortable. You're going to, you're going to see the benefit, especially when you begin drawing the right lines you need to, to create that structure. It's going to feel good. And that's really our North star. That's our compass because, mm. you know, I'm not going to tell someone to do something that that's going to hurt them. And so at the same time, it, 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 when you, when you finish with, let's say, you know, a flow practice or a session, you'll, you'll be able to detect how much of your body is worked, but it's not going to feel like you've overstressed it in most cases, or that you 
you work so hard that you're not going to be able to go again the next day. And this is why I incorporate it uh, as a daily practice. And so Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. there's that. And there's also the fact that honestly, it's just incredibly satisfying. I mean, you ever see like, you know, something that just looks pretty or, you know, watch a video of something where I mean, there's all kinds of stuff people cutting soap and weird things you know whatever but but there's something strange about our brains that goes i like that that's that's fine seeing this provides yeah. that feeling but doing it just as well creates that 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 just kind of strange uncanny level of satisfaction it's like this feels really good and i'm really and like and the brain food that you get the brain fireworks as we call them from both from the, the hemispheres and your spinal extension and just learning the movements as the yeah. weight's traveling in motion, it it's like it's like learning new movements. So we'll also we'll often call it a download from the matrix when we learn new movements. Because yeah, it's yeah. like you'll learn. I mean, it's literally like, I mean, I I've there's times before where I've learned a new move and just been ecstatic about it because I because now I can incorporate it in my flow. Mm. Um, I've got a couple of those uh, from about a year or so ago and I when I started to round out my practice, but um, but I still am always trying to find new transitions, um, and new ways to integrate the movement because it's like a, it's like a puzzle, but it's also working your body through all these different functions and ranges of motion. Um, it's, it's just really incredible. Oh yeah. It sounds like it. It sounds like, I, I mean, like, as you said, it's, it's, it's visually pleasant to see and beauty is something that seems like we've, we've been losing, uh, and there's been a kind of almost an attack on beauty on, uh, as, as we know, it, whether you're looking at act, you know, architecture or yeah. what is, you know, de- defining a body, you know, what a body is supposed to look, a healthy body yeah. is supposed to look like. Um, but the, you know, to have, to bring some beauty into your fitness, certainly not a bad thing, certainly not a mm-hmm. bad thing, especially when it doesn't cause wear and tear, not beauty as in look how, look how good I look in the mirror as I flex, you know, or whatever. But yeah. beauty, as in the movement itself, is actually uh, attractive. Like you just, you're you. Even if you don't do it, you'll want. When you watch it, you're like, you're like, you're watching something beautiful. You you acknowledge its visual, you know, attractiveness because of that. Because of the the flow of it is a great name. The flow of it. It's like to see a body move like that. It's like watching a dancer that that knows the craft and dance as well or or when you see someone who just knows their craft and move a body moving a body in motion it's um it's it's pleasing to your eye it's what makes sports such a such a a spectator sport it really is when you see a master moving whether it's basketball football whatever it is they're moving through that and they're doing something incredible it's visually pleasing you just turn your brain on and and this is very much but this is accessible to really, I mean, anyone. pretty much everybody, anyone. Yeah. So I, 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 I that. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's funny you mentioned that too, because, you know, I, I have one of the quotes that we, we talk about a lot. My friend Leo came up with this and he said, do something beautiful with your strength. So, mm. you know, it's, it's very much that idea. And then people talk about Michael Jordan, he says poetry in motion. I right. totally agree. There's something about that, that transits, you know, that, that, uh, uh, transcends all sports and all movement and, and connects them all in a, in a strangely satisfying way. So anyhow. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. But this is so, so accessible and with more people looking at ways to work out at home, not just because even if their area is opening up and gyms are starting to open their area or not, um, the convenience and to be able to do convenience is hundred percent the big, one of the biggest obstacles to people be able to work out is time and, and location. And if you got to park and check in and go to the locker room and go to the break room and you want to, this much time to, or you can grab your mace <laughs> out of the closet and step into your room or your garage or your backyard and spend 15, 20 minutes just moving better. Yes. You're going to feel better. You're going to get that in. It's, it's like, there's no barriers to, to getting it done you, you basically you can suffocate your excuse for for moving it doesn't have to be the hardest baddest workout you ever did it's like you moved you got yes. out there and moved and you felt better and you stimulated your nervous system and 
you, there's really no excuse. You just grab it. It's like, you're, you're like, you know what? I could take 15 minutes, grab this face, step at my backyard and feel better 20 minutes from now. Yes. And, you know, it's funny. I, I uh, this past year, I've recently completed what was almost a cross country road trip, basically from California okay. to Nashville. And, and so as you can imagine, when you're doing days where you're driving 13, 14 oh, yeah. hours or what have you, you not a lot of time to get movement in, uh, you know, uh, in between no. things. But having a mace is great when you, you know, again, to the degree, there's a, there's a societal cultural integration that I have to be aware of when I pull a mace. <laughs> but, but nevertheless. The so motel you, parking lot doing some Yeah, it's motel, yeah, the gas, you know, just add another gas station stereotype while you're at it. Yeah. There's a <laughs> weird guy over there swinging the clubs. Um, <laughs> On Route 66, but, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, you know, I would say we, and, and to the point that I call it a movement snack, where right? I, I didn't actually come up with that. Oh. One. That's another friend, friend of mine in the community, but um, oh, that's good. Yeah, I call it a movement snack. I mean, you know, there's so much about this that's beginning to transcend why we do fitness, why we move, what it's all about. Yes. And, and I'm now to a point where I'm looking at it holistically. Uh, to the degree that I find value in those things when I didn't before. I find you said it just best. Like there are literally days in where I've, where I've unfortunately been so busy that I wasn't able to dedicate the hour plus that I'd love to because I really just enjoy this so much mm -hmm. that I'd love to give the time to flow. So I only have 15 or 20 minutes. You better believe that I'm going to swing one of these guys for, for just even if it's just 360s, getting the shoulders worked up, getting yeah. some motion, a couple lunges with it, um, and. And it and it's you know it's something that I can incorporate as that sort of daily practice and, and that's why I compare it you know in so many cases to like brushing your teeth you know they they say you brush your teeth once it's not going to do much for you or even twice but when you do right. it twice a day for every day you gotta keep your teeth clean yes yeah and that's it's, how I take this yeah it's a it's a yeah it definitely you build on it yeah so don't, don't start it in two weeks you're like I can't figure this out and quit you're missing you're missing the point. Because yeah. it's the adaptation, it's the ramping up of, of, of learning. Like you said, when you download a new program or download a new movement into your arsenal, um, okay. there has so to, there's a process to it, you know? And, there, and, and if, if you think you're going to master this or be able to move through it and look, and look pretty in two weeks, well, no, no, you're not. But it's, it's about building on it. And it's that transition through that process that, that creates the effect you're looking for. It's your body changing. If you think you're going to master like you do a, you know, doing some a, a bench, like I said, a bench press and some curls. Well, no, it's not that simple. But mm -hmm. it's, but that's the point is that we don't move this way. And we're changing the way we move. We're changing our connection with our body. And, uh, and you've got to give it the, even if it is at first 15, 20 minutes a day to look on a video, look something up on Instagram or YouTube and just say, I'm going to try to do this one thing. Yes. Just pick one thing to do that mm -hmm. week, to master that week, or to just, just to practice that week, 15, 20 minutes a day. Don't interrupt the rest of what you're doing with your fitness routine. Just 15, 20 minutes. Yes. I just found that as a, as a trainer. That's great. Work, work on this one thing. And then the next week, pick a second one. And work on that and then put them together mm -hmm. and you know it's it, it, it's like blocks like legos just build on but pick pick one little thing to do or a puzzle you pick one little area you look at the edges you know just pick one thing to focus on move through it get it down feel good with it you know and then and then add on that but it's yeah. it's not about coming out and looking like a superstar <laughs> your first month doing something like this you're missing the point yeah. If you, if you look at it that way, if you try to approach it that way. Yeah. I mean, when I started the, you know, like I said, I started in the pandemic, but I, I had a consistent workout routine. I didn't, to your point, exactly. I didn't just flip it overnight. Um, yeah. I, I was doing, I would say I, I had a routine of hit workouts, both with kettlebell and just body weight as well as my martial arts class, but time it got wiped out. Right. So, you know, I was, I had a great discipline about doing these hit workouts and doing these kettlebell workouts and, and, it, and I was good at being consistent with it. And everybody, you know, everybody knows that formula by now, but yeah. honestly, you know, it was it, so many days looking back, it was like, I was either dreading it or I would just grip my teeth through it and I didn't enjoy it as much. 
And over time, as I, as I slowly incorporated more of the mace movements, there literally was a day where, where I just was like, I'm not getting any more benefit out of this. I can literally convert my entire movement practice into moving these objects. And I love it so much. I had to scratch my head a couple of times because I was like, you know, I, I, I wonder if I, you know, maybe leave some gaps out here or there. And as I've gone to do other things, whether it's, you know, play, you know, go join friends for other recreational sporting activities or what have you, everything has carried over quite brilliantly. So I'm, I'm sure. very, very pleased. And the, you know, absolutely. the results are absolutely there. Yeah, you're not going to lose. You're not going to lose in moving better. You can't lose. And I, and as I've, you know, nope. talking about age, but getting older, someone who, who started off, you know, in the 80s lifting and, and, the, and the early 90s, it's like that, um, you know, it was, it was very, there were narrow dimensions. There's a couple things you, you did. You did strength training, you did some cardio, and then maybe there was yoga coming in there really on the fringe at that point. And uh, there's not a lot of diversity. There's not a lot of um, range. You know, maybe someone did martial arts, but that was considered fitness so, so much back then. And it, it brings the diversity, but at some point there's a, there's a law of, of uh, limiting returns, you know, where it's like you, you can only, the amount of effort you, you go, you go up in effort, but you're only going to get so much back once you get to a certain point in a lot of those movements. You're, you're basically maintaining with a small degree of improvement over time. Yes. Um, and as we and with overuse injuries, that can actually go back against you, adding variety adding something new adding, and adding something that you enjoy that doesn't cause pain, but it actually gives you that kind of sense of um, where you're just improving your range of motion, which is to say that it's, it's, it's beautiful. You feel accomplished from it. It's satisfying. That's important for keeping you going, for being sustainable, for, for allowing you to maintain changes, but change is not for change sake, change for adaptation and for improvement, because there's a lot of room to improve in this area that most of us have been neglecting. And so yes. there's a lot of room for improvement. So even if you took 15, 20 minutes off of what your normal routine is, and you diverted it to something new like this, which is very different, which, which provides a lot of different adaptations and benefits, your return on that extra 15 minutes is going to be much greater Huge. than it would be if you just kept doing the same thing you've been doing for the last decade or two that mm -hmm. everyone else is doing that you you know the same movements over and over again come on if it just logically adding something with more diversity that's new to you is going to give you more benefit as you adapt into it you're not losing anything you're just you're adding to the Okay, if you want to, if flywheel, you want to, yeah, yeah, I think to the flywheel. That was your, you said, that's exactly right. The flywheel that is perfect. You're adding to your flywheel of what you can do, how your body can move, and uh, the benefits you get from the time that you invest. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> can you tell I'm excited a little bit? I was like, well, I, I, I think it was the timing I like of when I, I, I need it, you know, it's like I feel like I feel I need this, and I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh. You know, so go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it was like well, it's it's so funny. The fact that we're having this conversation, okay. Here, here's some. I'm 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 gonna date myself, and hopefully not you along with it. When I was oh, well, when I was, I'm dated. I'm 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 nearly sour milk. So hey, go look, ahead. No, you look great. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you just look, you you've got more threads on the top than I do. I think I'm 51. So, so every most of my listeners know that. So it's like, you know, it's like sour milk. You know, you're kind of right there on the edge where your expiration date is. You know, but uh, go ahead. I didn't mean to. Well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that movement, increase some of that too. So, but, um, but you know, the, I mean, when I was in college, so just get, to get this is something, uh, a perspective that I had that I've, I also continue to think about as, as I go through this and age and, and have these conversations, which is fitness, you know, having been born when I was in, in the early, you know, 1990, fitness, as I, as I learned was something that really even wasn't a concept until like, the seven the late 70s and 80s that's when people could actually dedicate time beyond work to do something more for their well-being so so when i when i say that i mean the cultural discussion about what is acceptable or what this is is something that has perpetually been evolving since then you know all the iterations of it um you know crossfit and everything else that's come along the way are, are just evolutions to this dialogue that's continued 
uh, a linear path moving forward. So, so much of, of why it is that we're talking about it in this way and we're kind of having to sell people on this idea. And of course, they're going to go and they're, they're going to have a chance to look at it and see for themselves. But right. um, so much of, of us having to, to talk about it in this way is because, it, it, you know, there's so there's such hesitance to performing, you know, certain motions because culturally it, it may feel weird or it may be uncomfortable. And sometimes, no. it, you know, for some folks, it may be, I mean, for some folks, they, they may go to it like a fish to water, but I yeah. do sense, especially in men, there's a very unique connection to where it can be exactly what they've needed in life. It can be sort of a, you can take the warrior spirit with you. We have mm. a, there's a whole section when you, when you take that mace and you put your hand in the middle versus at the top, where it, be, where it truly becomes like, uh, we call it battle position. So you mm. you can perform uh, uh, weaponized movements and ballistic movements. Uh, but, but generally speaking, there are, there is going to be a large, you know, a, a large number of people that are going to see it and are going to, are going to have to really a try it, but they're going to get out of their comfort zone a little bit because, because of the range of motion of movement it is also right. naturally more expressive. Right. So what happens is it, and when we talk about the meditative aspects of it, there will be a lot of self-reflection. You will find that if you're angry, it will come out in your room or it can't come out. If uh -huh. you're sad, if you're frustrated, if you're happy, you can, I mean, it will, it will come out. We, we talk a lot about this. It can get to the point where when you see somebody moving with the mace, it should stir some emotion within you. And that's, mm. that's kind of where so much of this hits a strange dichotomy of, of holistic health, well-being, and awareness is how your your mindset is and, and the way that it's affecting um, your mental state and your connection with yourself your reflection um, you know there's there are a lot there's already a number of of individuals and I would say especially guys that go to the gym and they you know they've got their 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 amped up music going and they're ready to go it's time to get to work let's go eat be hungry and all that and, and it's good i mean it, it, but 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 either way they're they're listening the emotions they need in order to right. perform right and for sure there's kind of a kind of a reflection that happens in that so i i mean so much of 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 this just needs to be more people like you and i having these conversations and trying it um and i can't wait to uh, have the opportunity to get down there to franklin to come and come and swing some with you yeah hey we gotta we gotta figure out when we can come. i'll come to you i know i know where boost is where you you practice some so I, those guys are are cool with me um uh, known them for years but um you know yeah i'd love to get together and just i'll i'll, I'll, I'll do some homework i'll get some uh I'll, I'll look some stuff on youtube and look at your at your page a little bit more and try to get some feel for it but i mean yeah i would love to uh get together and um you know i really see just on a personal note, I see this growing here. If there was more awareness, and yes. and the hard part about Nashville right now with everybody moving here and all of it is space and uh, yes. cost of space. You yes. know, so you might need to find something. But I could see dojos of this stuff popping up, much like um, I want to say like CrossFit specifically, but where or at least classes more formal classes, but I could see more of like just small spaces popping up where they have yoga studios, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of feel. Uh, I, I see that as the future for this. And it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of time. And this is such a hip city with everybody moving here from Chicago, New York, California, mm -hmm. by droves coming here, 200,000 yes. over the next five yeah, years. I, next prediction. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're in a good place I think, again, like you thought you were behind. I think I'm behind. It's still the tip of the spear, so to speak. Yes. As yes. far as just the beginning, just the beginning, your early adopters where you're going to get a, you can get like a, a really people, I mean, people see it. So I think, you know, I'd, I'd love to uh, help you promote it and share, start sharing some of your stuff on my feed. Um, yeah. Because I, I think it's so beneficial, so helpful to what is missing. Some of the things that are missing in fitness um especially as as i train a lot of people my age between 40 and 60 it's like it it would it would help them so much to be able to move like that again in every way shoulders back hips you know getting up and down off the ground grip strength all those things we start losing after 40 i mean they've got to be trained they've got to be addressed and it again it's not 
strenuous. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's a workout, but they're not going to have joint problems. They're not going to have overtraining issues. They're not going to be lifting too much weight. I mean, it can all be done in a very safe, effective level yes. that, do, that won't irritate problems. It'll only benefit. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to connecting and, and, and really promoting this. Maybe, try, you know, bring something significant here to Nashville. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of what holds maybe in some capacity what's held it back maybe up to this point is that uh, there's just not there aren't as many people that are that are really really advanced with it. So many of us sure. have had to just learn. I mean, I I I'm just fortunate that I had the right temperament and the background and so forth to incorporate this practice very quickly. But for most it takes a lot longer, especially because of the footwork involved and some other yeah, components that for sure. aren't necessarily as inherently cued into other more conventional fitness and sporting avenues. Uh, so, so there is some of that, but, but yes, it's just a matter, I think it is just a matter of time. And, and to your point earlier, you know, especially about aging, I had a client, a private client for almost a year who's 65 had major health issues really early in life. He, had, he actually had to live a sedentary life until he was about 21 because the doctors didn't think he would live past that long. And so wow. he was sedentary for years, only really explored physical movement and therapy when he, when he um, uh, got past 21, but then naturally entered into uh, uh, more of a traditional path like so many did in that generation to to just not move, not take, not eat well, right. and so forth, found himself uh, at the beginning of, of 2020, like barely being able to get off the ground. Um, wow. Or I should say at the, at the end of 2020. So he lost all this weight, but, it, you know, after, after fixing his eating problem, but then, his, you know, his sarcopenia took all this muscle. So uh, I, I started to work with him when he couldn't barely do a forward lunge without wow. tilting over I and mean, it was very it was you know we started at the very basics and we worked it up and I gave him homework and I would say within about seven or eight months I had him doing tree pose with 10 pound mace but tree, tree pose so you can't say you know a tree like yoga tree pose but with a mace in your hand so you've got you're, you're supporting all your weight on one leg um and you have the mace extended out from you so so all to say even, even for someone that had, you know, major challenges with his health and physical condition, we were able to improve that drastically in a pretty rapid amount of time with some consistency. So that's really all it takes. It's just a little by little, those 15 minute movement, snack, movement snacks are um, very nutritional for your overall health yeah. and well-being. Love it. That, that's the only kind of snacking I, I think I, I'm in favor of is movement snacks. Yeah. Uh, personally. Let's make it a thing. Let's make it a thing. I'm all about <laughs> movement, it. Movement snacks. Get up from your desk, do a movement snack. Go in the parking lot, do a movement snack, you know, on, yeah, on your snack. break at work, you know, mm -hmm. uh, before you get in the car to drive home, do a movement snack. You know, it's like, you're, you're right. That's, uh, it, we've, we've got to fit it in, but uh, nothing but, nothing but upside is what it sounds. Yeah. It really is nothing but upside on that. Man, it's been awesome to connect with you like this. Um, so glad we met, yes. and um, and I got to see what you do. Uh, but this is I want to I want to do more of it, like some in person, obviously stuff, and uh, yes. and maybe we can share that as well. Maybe we'll, we'll get some video of me being awkward with Mace, and uh, it's little, so fun. It's the best. Yeah, beginner expert, beginner, uh, and see you know show show everybody how you how you instruct. That'd be a cool uh, social media post i think so um a good one for instagram but um I'll, I'll have to you know take the ego down and just uh go with the flow but no, i'll make it look good we'll, we'll get you look good. <laughs> thank you appreciate it all right man. well hey uh we're gonna connect but uh, i'm gonna um, i'm looking forward to sharing this episode i think it's um really not what people are used to hearing and i, and I hope you get a lot more uh significant some significant following from this uh people can find you at jared michael thomas on instagram and then Music yes. City, Music City Flow on Twitter as well, right? Yes, I'm I'm getting a little more active on Twitter, but um, and then a, and the YouTube channel to come, but uh, have to hang tight for that one. Yeah, YouTube, yeah. Yeah. great way where visual visual uh, media is the best place for you, definitely. All right, man. Well, have a great week. Yeah, you as well. Thank you, Zane. Hope to connect soon. Okay. <laughs>